Ninjago has given us a lot of minifigures, so it's only natural that some would be rarer and thus more valuable than others. What do you think the most valuable minifigure is? Stay tuned for the end of the video to find out. Today we are going to be looking at the top 20 most valuable Ninjago figures as of the time of the recording of this video. Prices will be listed in US dollars, this information was obtained by a brick set and is of course always subject to change. So let's get into it! At number 20 we have got Phantom, who goes for around $29 new and $27 used. This guy was only released in one set back in 2012, the Fangpire Truck Ambush, so it's not a surprise that 11 years on he's one of the rarest and most valuable Ninjago minifigures. At 19 we have got Kabuki Nia, who will also go for around $29 new and $25 used. Exclusive to the 2018 Bricktober pack, this was a fantastic minifigure taken straight out of the Tournament of Elements. It's even the only Nia minifigure to have her iconic bracelet printed on her arm. At number 18 is JDX, who will go for around $30 new and $17 used. Another minifigure that was hard to get even back in 2011. JDX was one of the few 2011 minifigures not to be released in the traditional spinner set. Instead he came in the Toys R Us exclusive Skeleton Bowling and again in the summer in the, get this, Toys R Us exclusive Lightning Dragon Battle. Yeah, LEGO clearly wanted this guy to be special and it certainly worked. Next up at 17 is NRG Cole who will go for around $30 new and $6 used. Released in 2012 in a spinner pack, this guy is actually pretty cheap to get used, but a new figure is a whole other story. The NRG Ninja were quite special so it's no wonder that they've all increased in price. I wonder if we'll see any others on this list. At 16 is Karloff who will go for $33 new and $20 used. Certainly one that surprised me, Karloff was of course released in the Dojo Showdown in 2015 as one of the few Elemental Masters released in an actual set. He has of course made multiple appearances in the show since then with no figures released since so that likely explains why his price is so high. At number 15 is Oni Lloyd who will go for around $34 new and $35 used. The newest minifigure on the list and definitely not a shock, exclusive to the Golden Ultra Dragon this is certainly a highly sought after minifigure, mostly because of that fantastic Golden Oni mask piece. As the crystallized sets are still readily available however, this is a minifigure whose price is likely to change a lot in the coming months or years. At number 14 we've got Day of the Departed Pythor, he will go for around $35 new and $30 used. No surprises here, this is a brilliant minifigure, one of my favourite Pythor figures released. I love the white robes he has. Exclusive to the Samurai X Cave in 2016, this is certainly a worthy inclusion on this list. At number 13 we've got Crooks who will go for $37 new and $34 used. Exclusive to the Iron Doom and featuring a double face print where you can see his Dr. Saunders disguise, this is definitely a great and highly detailed minifigure that I love. At number 12 we've got the Possessed version of Lloyd who will go for $37 new and $24 used. Another of the few figures on this list to be released in multiple sets, Lloyd came in the Morrow Dragon and City of Sticks and what a fantastic minifigure he is. Featuring an exclusive hood piece which really amplifies the Possessed look, this figure was definitely a must get in 2015. At number 11 we've got the Bricktober Golden Kai from 2017, he will go for $41 new and $29 used. Once again, a Bricktober exclusive minifigure, based on his rebooted suit, this is a minifigure straight from Into the Digiverse, but made even better with leg detailing not present in the show. The only issue with this minifigure is the lack of a golden half mask piece, but outside of that it is still fantastic and was actually the first golden ninja minifigure released that wasn't Lloyd Garmadon. At number 10 we've got Nero, who will go for $43 new and $41 used. He is from the same Bricktober pack as Kai, so it's obvious why he's here. An Elemental Master who featured in both Season 4 and Season 9, for a character who's been quite prominent in the show this is a very hard minifigure to obtain. Next up we've got the White Nindroy, he will go for $45 new or $40 used. Again from the same Bricktober pack as Nero and Kai, this white version of Cryptor was featured in Skybound at the Hiroshi's Labyrinth Vault. This highly detailed minifigure is a delight to behold and even features this rare head printing that wraps around the side of the head. All of that makes for a brilliant figure which, which can even be used to army build regular white nindroids, which probably explains why he's the most expensive of this Bricktober pack. At number 8 we have got Acronix who will go for $45 new or $34 used. The second of the Hands of Time, just like Crooks, he was only released in the Iron Doom. 
At number 7 we have got Samukai who will go for $47 new and $21 used, the original four-armed villain. This guy was certainly the skulking that every fan wanted in 2011. He only came out in Garmadon's Dark Fortress and the Incredible Fire Temple. Despite dying because of the golden weapons, he returned again in Day of the Departed but no figure for him was ever re-released, meaning he remains locked away in those two long-retired sets. Number 6 is Acidicus, who will go for $47 new and $20 used, my personal favourite Serpentine minifigure, and he only came out in the Epic Dragon Battle. Acidicus was certainly a highly sought after minifigure in 2012, and that has only increased as this set entered retirement. Number 5 we've got Akita, who will go for $49 new and $43 used, another relatively new minifigure and certainly a surprise to me to see her so high so soon. Akita could transform into the wolf-like creature released in Lloyd's Journey, which is made evident from the wolf on her hairpiece and her long, tail-like cape. Akita only came out in the Castle of the Forsaken Emperor, making her quite a rare minifigure. Number 4 is the Golden Master, who will go for $50 new and $38 used, the first ever Overlord minifigure released in the Battle for Ninjago City. If you saw my Overlord collection video, you'll know why this guy is so good. Fantastic detailing that could pair up nicely with the tripod mech, this is definitely a minifigure collectors will want in their collection. At number 3 there is Lloyd DX who will go for $59 new or $53 used, the only minifigure on this list that I don't own. Lloyd DX was a special figure released in a Target exclusive minifigure pack, despite not being canon this guy is clearly highly sought after, and one day maybe I'll own him, but not at that price. At number 2 is Kilo, who will go for a whopping $64 new or $56 used, technically not a minifigure but a big fig, coming straight from the Kilo vs Samurai X set, this guy is a great figure who looks truly menacing with that orange oni mask. And finally, what is the most valuable Ninjago minifigure? Did you guess correctly? It's NRGJ, the GOAT, but still cheaper than THE GOAT. Coming in at $64.46 new and $28.89 used, yeah this one probably isn't a shock to a lot of people, he's been highly sought after for years in the Ninjago community and it's no surprise why. He was exclusive to a spinner released in 2012 and only on sale for a very short amount of time. So yeah, that is the top 20 most valuable Ninjago minifigures ever released. Are you surprised by any of the picks on this list and how many do you own? Let me know in the comments down below and if you've enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe for more Ninjago videos just like this and I will see you again very soon.